le mot est devant faucheur. Parlez-vous français? Pourquoi? Mm. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. It's interesting when we take words that we know in English and we transpose them into something else. One of the things I, I was uh, just excited to learn years ago is that different languages use different contexts of understanding. This one in particular. In English, the word word is a noun. We look at a physical Bible or the pages of the Bible and we see that as the physical. If we do it in French, we see the word as an action and we find the same is true if we use Spanish and, and Filipino and, and, and all kinds of different Hebrew languages and, and Aramaic. Word is a verb. In other words, the Bible calls us to action. It, it calls us to do something besides sitting, reading, studying, looking at the context, uh, looking at the history. It actually means do something. And when we understand the word of God, it calls us to do something. Listen, we're in our last week, the fifth week on why. Why did God come to earth? It's simple. The, the capstone of all of it is this. Jesus came as an example for you and I to follow. Hey, look at everything he did. It was an example of how to live a righteous, holy, sanctified, loving, caring life. Uh, Joan Osborne wrote a song in the 90s. It, it's called One of Us. He got seven Grammy nominees. And it, she says, what if God was one of us? A slob like one of us on a city bus just trying to make his way home. I would love that song when it came out. And don't get me wrong, the, the lyrics are irrelevant. And, and it's a theologically not even in, in anywhere close. But think about this. What if she's not that far off? Now, I don't want to call Jesus a slob, but he was homeless. He didn't bathe every day. He didn't have deodorant like you or I or, or a comb to comb his beard. Maybe he didn't look as primp and proper as we are. In the church today, you've got to look a certain way, otherwise you're just disrespectful, Right? Those aren't the things that Jesus was worried about. And right off the bat, this, maybe this song has a little more context of, of what the church should be. We should probably worry less about the external, more the internal. Otherwise, we're going to be what Jesus called us, a whitewashed tomb. Oh, we look good on the outside, but the inside is dead. But that's a sermon for another day. Today, I want to go to the beginning. Because remember, in the beginning was the Word. So join with me in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. I'll be reading now the NIV Bible. Here's what it says. Try to get the tonality out of this. And it says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. And without Him nothing was made that had been made. In Him was life. And that this life was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light. So that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He also came as a witness to the light. The true light comes from the light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And through the world was made through him, and the world did not recognize him. And he came in which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yes, to all who did not receive him. To those who believed in his name, though he gave the right to become the children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or human will but born of God. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. Thank you that you came 
into the world. You, be, you became flesh. The Word became flesh and, and light that shines in the darkness. And Lord, there's so many times we're living in dark times and, and we need the light. And we need you to give us an example of who we are and what we should be doing. So Lord, thank you that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In Jesus' name, amen. And this is interesting. In the beginning was the, the Word. But if we go back to Genesis, at the very beginning, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's how the Old Testament starts. But the New Testament starts, in the beginning was the Word. And does it sound like a contradiction to you? Because it's not. It really isn't. In the beginning, God spoke, and the heavens and earth and everything was created with his word. And so John is validating that God is the word and that Jesus becomes the word in the flesh. That God spoke everything into existence. So it's not counterintuitive. It's, it's not fighting against it. It's verifying it. And what a beautiful way to literally go from the Old Testament that God said day and night and there was a separation. And remember, he created us in their image, multiple, plural, uh, tritarian, God the Father, Jesus Son, the Holy Spirit. We were created in their image, the words. And, and remember, everything that had been made was made through him. And so again, John is validating that Jesus was the creator with God. And it all starts to work together. The word was so important. And listen, here's what it says. If we go to Isaiah, um, Isaiah breaks down in Isaiah 55, verse 11. It, God says, so shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall not prosper in the things for which I sin it. Listen, we have to realize when God speaks, he speaks something out, and when it returns, it's going to return for the purpose in which God created it. The same is true for Jesus. The things Jesus said and the things Jesus did were for a purpose. And they come back. They come back in the way that you and I love each other, the way we care for each other, the way we live this Christian life, this sanctified life. When we really look at it, God's words are, are sacred, right? And well, you need to be a prophet for God to speak to you, right? See, a lot of people like call themselves prophet and prophecies. Listen, a prophet is somebody that God talks to. You and I can talk to God, but there are very few people that God speaks to. Oh, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people out there who will take your money and tell you what God's telling them. Uh, they're called shysters, to be honest. I don't, don't think I'm, I'm that callous. I, I believe there are some, but there's too many people gaining the glory on themselves and not pointing to God. There's a big difference. But see, there were people that God spoke to, and, and, and it was limited. It was the prophets, and we read about them in the Bible, but other than that, millions upon billions of people have not heard from God. I, your pastor, I've not heard from God. But if God spoke to me, could you imagine how serious those words were? Have you ever yearned for God to speak to you in that audible voice? And we've talked about that here within this congregation. A few people have heard God speak. I'm not one. But we've all felt God speaking to us through the Spirit, leading us, but not that audible voice truth of it is you and I are careless with words, aren't we? We say things that hurt each other. We say things that aren't really nice. Uh, we say things in exaggeration. Uh, we say things to minimize things. It, it's kind of like our, our words are kind of careless at times, but God's words are already prayerful and purposeful. God has a purpose for his words. And so when he speaks, realize he's, he's meditated on what do I tell these people on this planet. He's prayerfully he's slow. He's, he's methodic because, again, you and I's free will get involved in it. And so God's words are prayerful and purposeful. And many times ours is 
just words. Could you imagine if you or my words really were anchored in something of value that we were very careful when we spoke, that we spoke life, not death. And we realized our words were a double-edged sword that either we were protecting or killing. Too many times our words are hurting and killing. Maybe not in the physical sense, but maybe in the emotional, maybe in the spiritual. See, we need to make sure that our words are purposeful. Our example is influential. And see, that's what Jesus was doing. Jesus is even quoted saying, I did not come to abolish the law, I come to fulfill it. And so Jesus' words have meaning. And so Jesus, again, says, I I have not come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it. In a lot of ways, Jesus came to show us the example of the word becoming flesh. Uh, Think about it. If we go on to Exodus, we we find there's this dichotomy over Old Testament, New Testament. And, And in Exodus 21, verses 24 and 25, it says, an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound. And all that is about harming a girl and everything else and how we deal with them. But Jesus comes and he fulfills the law. So we can find where Jesus starts to change this up in Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 42. Here's how Jesus fulfills this. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go a mile, go with them too. Give to the one who asks you. Do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. See, the the law is that we can repay people for what they've done. Jesus shows a different way to repay them, but again, doing it with love and submission. A lot of times we're told, fight, yell, and scream. I'm going to get back at that person. They harm me, so I'm going to harm them twice as much. And what Jesus is saying is, offer your other cheek. Because really, as Christians, what we want to do is show them a different way. See, the rest of the world will fight. Right, The rest of the world will get dirty. But you and I as Christians, we are not to be known for getting in the mud. I always said, never wrestle with a pig. You both get dirty, if you know what I mean. And the pig likes it. It's just another day for the pig. I grew up on a farm. Trust me, I've wrestled with a lot of pigs. At the end of it, the pig was just moving on being the pig. And I stunk, and I was dirty, and I felt like a fool. I think a lot of times you and I get that way. We forget that Jesus came to show us what to do, right? I I had this mind-blowing understanding the other day as I was writing this, and I thought to myself, I'm like, Jesus was the first YouTube, right? Before there was internet or anything else, think about it. What do we do at YouTube? If you don't know how to do something, you click on YouTube, how to, da-da-da-da-da. And we can almost accomplish anything going to YouTube. Really, when you think about it, when I first became a Christian, I needed to know how to love somebody whose life was just a mess. I opened up the pages and found where Jesus loved the woman at the well. He didn't condemn her for her sins. I was a mess. And I could see the word became flesh in the way that Jesus loved her. And maybe because my life was full of sin and I didn't feel like I belonged in the church, but I could read in the word the woman caught in adultery that Jesus didn't condemn her also. But he told her to go and sin no more because judgment was coming. But he kept giving her another chance. Hey, I know you messed up. We've all messed up. Now go and stop it. I needed to learn that in my life. And, and maybe when I needed to learn how to have faith, right? Because I didn't have faith. I, I needed to learn how, how do I have faith and trust in Jesus. And I read about the woman who bled for 12 years and how she just touched the hem of his cloak. And at the same time, Jairus is over there with the child dying. Just say the word. 
so I could see the word became flesh and the way things were done. I had this horrible job. I didn't know what to do. How would Jesus look at me? And then I read what Jesus did with Matthew at the tax collector table. It let me know there was new opportunities if I would trust him and just get up and go. And one of the other things, just I, I, I say this as a joke. I, I always say I'm a first-generation Nazarene, but 10th-generation hooligan. Listen, if you knew the old me, you wouldn't like me. I was a jerk, and I'm really good with these. Or at least I was. I'm an old man now. Now I wouldn't hurt a fly. I just love people. But at the time, I thought, why would God want anything to do with me? I'm a jerk. And then I read how Jesus loved Peter. I got to see how Jesus cared about people. Even a jerk like me on a bus trying to get home when I felt like there was no home in my life. I may have taken a bath, but I was a slob. See, the truth of it is Jesus came to show us how to live out what we read. It's about reading, learning, and doing. That's why the word became flesh, and it's a verb. It is going forward. It's through Jesus' example how we learn to, to deal with religious people, how to deal with tax collectors, politicians, um, even how to deal with ourselves. Even whenever Jesus has to warn Peter, and he calls him Satan, get behind me when our attitudes are not the way they should be. Jesus corrected us and continued to love us. Somebody sees us and don't like us, they just hate us forever. See, Jesus came for the word to become flesh, actively showing us what to do. Jesus showed us that there's gonna be times we just need to get alone and pray. Jesus showed us we could get exhausted from doing ministry. And maybe you're not a pastor, but if you're telling people about Jesus, you can get tired. And Jesus tells us, if they hate you, remember they hated me too. Remember, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And if you go back during this entire series, you'll see that the whole thing was set up because the word had become flesh and Jesus dwelt among us. We don't have to sing a song, what if God was one of us? He was. God did dwell among us. All these people called in and on the news, what if he really was? And at the time, I wasn't a Christian, but I'd went to church as a bus kid for a little Nazarene church. Jim Huebner was my pastor. And growing up there, you know, and all the things the Humaner family did for me, as later in life I become this prodigal child and running away and hating and calling myself an atheist and yada, yada, yada. But when I heard that song, I still thought, yeah, he did. It was Jesus. I mean, I don't believe in him, but it, 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 if it was, it was Jesus. And now I'm 52, about to turn 53, and I'll tell you, it was Jesus. God became flesh and dwelt among us and he showed us everything we need to live this beautiful, glorious life. Oh, we'll have trouble and even Jesus says, in this life you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. Maybe today you could change the way you think. Jesus being the first YouTube. And instead of jumping online to YouTube, figuring out how to do stuff, you know, and there's tons of sermons like this one on YouTube, but you can also search your internet. How did Jesus deal with broken? How does Jesus love the unlovable? And we can see how the word became flesh. It's interesting, you may not know this. Four chapters, right? The Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four, four Gospels. And in this, so many times people don't realize that Jesus was quoting the Old Testament. He really was. Matter of fact, 26 times in the first 
five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, the books of Moses, the law, and then he does Psalms and Proverbs. Um, a total of 78 times throughout it, um, Psalms, Proverbs, so Poetics, but then most of them are in the prophets. You know, the ones we talked about earlier where God spoke to people? Jesus is quoting them because Jesus knew God really did talk to them. I don't know if God talks to you, but he talks to me when I get in the word. The greatest thing you and I can do today besides give our lives over to Jesus Christ is make sure we're in the word daily. I want to learn. I, I need help. I'm like that sheep that goes wandering and I need my shepherd to come save me and bring me back. My attitude wanders. Uh, this year has made us all wander a little bit. We need to quit seeking out politicians and news stations and social media to answer our questions. When Jesus does, he always does, and he always will. The question is, will you seek him, or will we continue to seek the world? The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Even in that passage, it says, some people didn't receive him, but others did. And they are known as children of God. I don't want to be known as a child of the world anymore. I want to be known as a child of God. Seek Jesus. I, I pray you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I really do. It'd be foolish to think that every person watching this is a born-again Christian. That Jesus Christ is the Lord of their life. That Jesus is full control of everything they do. But I just know that's not true because... Believe it or not, during this COVID lockdown, this video, our sermons have been broadcasted all over the world. We have people watching. We have people making decisions, uh, people sending in questions. I get them in my personal message box every week. But let me ask you, you, have you submitted to God in the beginning, the one who created it all? Have you admitted you've been wrong? You've sinned, I did. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted his blood for the forgiveness of your sins, for restoration um, between that relationship between God and you through the blood of Jesus? Have you let the Holy Spirit guide you in your life? Maybe you've been in church your whole life and you've never asked God to sanctify you. You're still struggling with carnality you're still struggling with anger and rage or, or jealousy or gossip or slander, right? Check out Galatians 5. It'll tell you what goes on with those things. Today could be the day. Today could be the day where the word becomes flesh and lives among you, in you, through you, but especially through you because it's action. Would you pray with me this morning? Maybe you could pray one of these prayers. Maybe it's different prayers. And, and maybe you're good. Would you still pray along with me that the power of the Holy Spirit may be speaking with someone else, somewhere else in the country, somewhere else in the world who are going to receive salvation through Jesus Christ today? Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. God, forgive us. We've fallen short of the glory of God. Father, it seems like we just fall and fall and fall, but you pull us up. So Lord, would you redeem us like the woman at the well? And, and Father, would you Allow us to be called children of God. Jesus, we accept you as our Lord and Savior right here, right now, today, this very moment. And Jesus, we understand that it was your blood that cleanses us, sanctifies us, and sets us apart for your purpose. But Father, we're gonna need your Holy Spirit to make us holy people, to help us live righteous lives, to be set apart for your sake, not the world's. And Father, I, I pray for those today who have never felt the sanctifying power, the freedom from sin that the Holy Spirit provides and eradicating the sinful nature, those desires that we're born with that, that pull us away from you. And Father, maybe today we're praying for other things. Father, maybe we're praying for our families for restoration, maybe restoration of love, for protection of jobs. Lord, we continue to pray for our country. We continue to pray for frontline workers, doctors, nurses, aides, EMT drivers, policemen, firemen, and, and doctors, and it goes on and on and on and on. Father, we're in need of you. Father, right now we need you. 
So come into our lives. Redeem us, restore us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed one of those prayers, would you just send me uh, just a short message? Let me know you did. Maybe there's something else I need to be praying for. I'd love to pray for you. I really would. But I don't know how to pray if you don't tell me. And listen, you don't know who I used to be. Don't, don't be embarrassed over what you're struggling with. Send me a message. Let me partner with you today and forever to pray for salvation to come to you and on and on and on until Jesus comes back again. Hey, always remember, God loves you and so do I. I pray I see you soon. God bless.